Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to continue on uh, looking at the book, uh, The Moments 10 Controversy. And uh, we've looked at the idea in his chapter on Lordship Salvation. I only looked at one part of Lordship Salvation, one wing of it, the Armenians. Even though he names Sproul, MacArthur, and, and uh, James White, and these guys who are Calvinists. And the wings are different in how they view uh, eternal salvation. He also said perseverance uh, from the Calvinist view was that they preserved themselves, which is an outright lie. They believe God preserves them. The guy, the guy's all over the place. His view of the salvation that God showed him is that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in a bunch of facts, as he describes it at the end of the book here. And then God gives you repentance. That creates the sorrow. And then you're able to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is what, is what saves you. That's the nonsense he came up with off the top of his head. This is private interpretation. The stuff he's just making up off the top of his head. He doesn't prove in or on mean anything different. That modern versions change the, uh, on to in sometimes, but even most of the time. But other times, they don't change it. New Living Translation has on still for Acts 16.31. And a lot of times these changes are for uh, copyright reasons. In order to have a copyright, you've got to be able to have to show differences from the King James Bible. And uh, so they'll often change the uh, word on to in, just a simple for copyright reason. It has nothing to do with it, uh, a head belief versus a heart belief. Uh, we'll get to that when we look at it, that issue. But he has here... Uh, uh, but, uh, because of this new definition, uh, page, this is page 110, uh, that then leads to their warped view of a new birth. Sometimes people like myself will refer to a changed life after salvation. Now, if we grace is always say you get a changed life. Inwardly. You get a new man. I mean, in, in nature, you get two natures. You got an inward man. The Holy Spirit comes in and dwells you. The Father comes in and dwells you. The Holy, the, the, the uh, Son of God comes in and dwells you. The Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. All three persons of Trinity indwell in you. So you get your inner man, which is incorruptible. All three graces say that. The issue is the outward walk, because that's still volitional. That's what these guys have denied, and that's what the Lordship of Salvation has denied. The Calvinistic wing. In plain words, a Christian would not act and think the way he, he or she used to. That's why you act, that's why you Romans 6 16, you have to yield. That's why there's a battle going on with your flesh, the old man and the new man. Remember, that's what he, this guy was talking about. JT was talking about, oh, I'm talking to myself. The old man wants me to sin. You see, he meant they, they still sin. So what are you still sinning for? Because you're volition. When a person gets saved, the Lord is going to clean up that person's life through sanctification. <laughs> Not unless the person allows him to, which is volition. You've got to yield. Here's uh, the gospel according to Jesus, MacArthur. As a part of his saving work, God will produce repentance, faith, sanctification, yieldedness. See, yieldedness is what you have to do. They say, God does it for you. Takes the free will. That's why Brian Denham would never teach about free will. Obedience, ultimately glorification. Now, glorification will be automatic because you're new, you have a new man in you and... Uh, uh, that is the uh, an unconditional aspect of it, but your walk is conditional. That's why you get different rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. But that's why they stay away from the Calvinist wing of worship salvation. They don't want that stuff brought up. They go to the Armenian wing and they can hit the Armenian wing hard. You know, they don't believe in eternal security and other stuff. The kid, the kid just lies all over the place, makes up stuff as he goes along, makes up new definitions. But let's look at Ephesians two ten. That's the big one. Ephesians 2.10, they look at ordained, and they say, see that? You know, you're ordained to have good works. Ordained in that context means you're prepared. See, they never, lose, they, they never look actually at dictionaries, these people. So you're appointed, and the, the, in the context, the appointment there is, or, is prepared. Good works are prepared for you. So we see what he says about... Uh, uh, Ephesians 2.10. Uh, and I've made videos on this. A Christian is created unto, unto good works and told to walk in them. This crowd does not like to talk about this verse ever. 
<laughs> Why made a video on it? A greasy gracer. Let's see, a greasy gracer. Where do you get greasy from? Actually believes that a Christian just believes and that's it. Nothing happens. That's a lie. That's a lie. And he'll talk, by the way, he's talking about the, uh, uh, let's see, inward and outward. Let's see, let's see. Oh, it says somewhere else. Okay, here it is. I'm just, yeah, look here. They try to say a Christian can have a change or some change. Now, we say there's always an inward change. When you're born again, you're born again. You have a new nature. So it's a lie. The issue is the outward walk. What are you going to do? And they admit it. This guy admitted, you can go back to the sins of death. Well, where's the change of life then? They'll never, they'll never reconcile the two. But they're going to go to Ephesians 2.10. That's their key verse. And they think, see, you're ordained unto good works. That means you will produce good works. God will produce good works through you because you're ordained to them. No, it means you're prepared for good works. The works are prepared for you to do. Um... They try and say a Christian can have a change. No, we say a Christian will have a change inwardly, see. Or some change might change, but the scripture uh, I provided says otherwise. He provides. There must be and will be a change inwardly and outwardly. They, no, inwardly. Because that's what, the, sanctific that's what the salvation event is. You have an inward change. The sanctification process now of the walk is the outward fruit being shown? Are you shown? Are you actually yielding to the Holy Spirit, Romans six sixteen, or are you resisting the Holy Spirit, grieving Him or quenching Him? They don't want to deal with those verses. That's where sin comes from. Where does sin come from? Free will. <laughs> you choose against God, and the sin of death comes from you choosing against God so often that God says, "I've had enough with you," and He kills you like He did in the Old Testament people. Old Testament people were killed. When God says enough's enough, and you wipe them out, believers and unbelievers. Um, no, David was about to die. Uh, Dan, yeah, David. David was about to die when 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 the uh, uh, Nathan came to him. He spent a whole year out of fellowship. That's believe he gets to Psalm Psalm fifty one, and God had bad enough of him. And if he hadn't confessed, then God was about to kill him. And he would have went to Abraham's bosom. He was a saved man. There must be, there must be, and will be an out, a change inwardly. That's true, and outwardly, not true. A Christian will always sin until death. Okay, now he's just kind of treating himself. See, they don't want to deal with Christian perfection. What are you still sinning for? Where does this sin come from? It doesn't come from God. He's the one changing your life, yet he's allowing sin. Where is the sin coming from? Sin is rejection of God. But to believe that, they believe a Christian has to bypass hordes of doctrines <laughs> that say the opposite. And he gives, he gives a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, go to Romans 6, 6, 1 through 23, see 6, 16, heal. That's volitional. But let's look at the issue of uh, ordained. And that's the big word they hung up on. You're ordained. If you go to uh, Psalm 7, and we, we the King James Bible is its own dictionary. 713 he hath also prepared for, for prepared for him the instruments of death okay he ordaineth his arrows against the uh, persecutors prepared ordaineth you see the, God is defining that word there for you and Isaiah 30 so what just means is that in um, Ephesians 2 10 is that God has a plan for your life. He has all the rewards laid out for you. Everything laid out that you can get, receive, at the judgment seat of Christ, Christ is laid out for you. God is going to just open the doors for those blessings. But you still have to go through the door. Walk. Your walk is volitional. And the reason you have different rewards, people are going to have different rewards, and people have no rewards, which even the Lordship Salvation is a myth. Brian Daniel has admitted that. Only people at the judgment seat of Christ know what's where's the change life. They'll never actually deal with those things. Uh, 
let's see if I can find the verse here. Uh, chapter 30, Isaiah 30. Torbit. Verse 33. <clears throat> this is uh, Isaiah 30, 33. For Torbit is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. See? Prepared, ordained. Doesn't always mean it's going to be automatic. It's prepared. Those things are prepared, appointed. But in the, the the issue of Ephesians two ten, your your good works are prepared. Ephesians two ten. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, prepared, that we should walk in them. He prepared them. And he appointed us to walk in them. They're prepared for us. And that's the meaning, that's what, that's what he's talking about. But you have to do them. You have to volition your own volition, make that decision. These guys are telling you, one hand they're telling you, well, you can still you can still sin, and you're still going to you can even sin to the point of sin unto death. But God is going to change your life, and you're going to have a changed life. Well, the two hold don't hold true. Now the perseverance of the saints, but the, the Calvinists say is that God will bring you will have to bring you back to a fellowship, or you're not you're never a true believer. But if you believe in the one saved, always saved view of uh, eternal security, believe in the idea of even to uh, sin unto death, like JT mentioned there, then the changed life is not a necessity. It's not it's not going to be automatic. Because God, you have to willingly, volitionally yield to God's uh, uh, commands and his uh, uh, his will. If you don't, then all the good works appointed to be ordained for you, appointed for you, mean nothing. Because these are just things that you could have had, but you chose against them. And the, the Bible shows up the judgment of Christ. All the good works that you could have, the fruits, the things that you, know, that you could have done to earn rewards will be shown to you. You could have done this, you could have done this, you could have done this. God laid it out. But you said no. So I'm going to stop here, put this up. Uh, we've got bad weather coming in for the next few days, so I'm going to get some videos up quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, because probably be out, uh, the internet will probably be out in the next couple of days and continue dealing with this work. So next video, I'll, we'll do, I'll go more deep into this and show the absurdity of this uh, this, this idiotic uh, kid, uh, young man who doesn't know what he's talking about. This is what you have when you have people who just think they can just say anything off the top of their heads without any proof. He doesn't have one, one footnote on the Calvinistic section. Most of the stuff he puts in is just filler. Nothing to do with the Romans 10 controversy. You know, he has a Catholicism, the word of faith people. He's got the, uh, you know, Lordship Salvation, which only deals with one part of it. Um, and he's got another, another group in there. It's nothing to do with that. It just fills it up. The issue is, the real issue in the Romans 10 controversy is against the free grace people. We're the people saying Romans 10 is not for the gospel of today. So that's the guys you got to deal with. All the other stuff is just like, you know, fill. And, uh, you know, just tries to fill the work out and say, okay, you see, he knows something. But uh, he got this idea of salvation, or oh, King James Bible, I, I, God showed me something. Oh, in means different mind. In the middle of the video, he's got to say, well, you know, John 3, 16, and it says in, and they really mean the same. Then he goes, well, Jesus Christ is speaking in the third verse. It's a preposition. It has nothing to do with how Jesus Christ is speaking, what voice he's speaking. He just makes stuff up. 
So I'll stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.